How are we doing, everybody? It is nighttime live. We are going to do fat realities, the dangers of uh, type 2 diabetes and skin diseases and all sorts of stuff. And I wanted to preface this one more time because I actually did do a pre-video about this. But I wanted to very seriously preface this. Uh-oh. Hmm. Give me a second. We seem to have an issue with the one thing here. Give me a second. Anyway, what's up, what's up everybody? I'm trying to make sure that we are good to go when it comes to... Let me see if it... Doesn't seem to be working. I'm trying to make sure that we're, we're live on Rumble. So give me one second here, guys. But I just wanted to preface this with everybody. Like, just to be very honest, we, 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 are, we are about to... Uh, I mean, from England, what's going on? You know, what, I, what we're doing is... It's the fat reality, the dangers of obesity, and it's going to have some graphic content in it. So I just want everybody to understand, like, I, this is not meant to uh, in any way hurt anybody's feelings. This is not meant in any way to, uh, whoops, how do I get the embed key? Okay, we might have to upload this a different way. So this might not be live on, uh, on Rumble. So shit, I got to figure that out. But I do, don't want to hold anybody back. What we're going to do is we are going to talk very seriously about the dangers of obesity. We are going to look at things on a screen uh, that I think some people may not like. Uh, it may be graphic in nature. We are going to go through some studies first, and then we are going to talk, and I will answer questions. Um, I'm not going to talk about anything political on, the, on, this, on, on this live. Absolutely. I, and I've, I've, I've been getting away from it on, on this on these lives anyway, just because I'm trying to make sure that this is about health, because it is about health, okay? Like, that, that, that is what everybody needs to understand. This needs to, we, we need to stop kidding ourselves. We need to, no matter what you, you know, no matter what your affiliation, in any way, with any group, of any kind, in any way possible, you should try to be healthy. Uh, you should absolutely just try to be healthy. And I, I truly mean that. Now, I did want to preface this, that we are as we do for, for some lives. We are running a very serious special this time with 60% off a three-month block of our coaching. We only have a few slots available, so if you are interested, please do scoop that up because the prices do go up. We are not going to be doing the, the, uh, the, the marked-off prices on all of our lives. It will probably be for some different stuff, too. But we also have uh, 30 minutes uh, consultations uh, that are also on here, too, at a dis discounted price. So... I'm putting that down in here now. Boom, boom, boom. It should go everywhere. And uh, let's see. I'm just going to say hi to a few people while we get other people on. Uh, some uh, Shadowcast Prime. How are you? Kashina, how are you doing? Rebecca Kaplan. Lots of familiar faces. Ron H., what's going on? King Richard III from England. How the fuck are you doing, King Richard? Uh, hello, everyone. J Jen Louise Belize. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. I hope, I hope you understand. Uh, Novali. Not going to be able to stomach the visuals, but the info is, is too important to ignore. Thank you very much. Liam Rice, Michelle G, Amelia C. Uh, it's the Julian to your Ricky bitch. How are you doing? Uh, Isaac Jacks, Darth Bain, all sorts of people. How are you doing? Dakota, welcome. Uh, Sandy, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I feel, I feel really, 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 really good. We're about to go through a different, uh, my training's about to change, about to go through a harder training block. I normally take uh, uh, the, good, the better part of December and most part of January, I normally take to uh, just do mobility work and uh, kind of, kind of uh, relax on my body a little bit. I am uh, going to be hitting my wife's uh, uh, suspension system training, which you can get on our app also. Uh, I'm going to be hitting that very, very, very hard. It's an extremely challenging program. It can start from very basic. I normally start it about halfway through. Uh, so I, this phase one, two, I'm going to start on phase three, do phase three for about two weeks, and I'm going to go to phase four. I don't know if I'll be able to get, even get to phase five. Phase four, phase four is very challenging because what I normally do is I'll do back-to-backs. But anyway, uh, that's just what I plan on doing. Uh, I'm going to wait for just about another three or four minutes, and audio seems to be a bit different than usual streams. 
I hope you guys can hear me really well. Um, if not, it is what it is. Hello, hi, what's up from Kentucky? King Richard, uh, love you, man. Been watching you for, for, for years, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, I'm finding it very interesting that coming back to doing these lives and stuff like that has brought back some people that, weren't, that have watched it for a long time. Um, and to be real, uh, I, you know, the world's been so crazy in the last two years that it was hard, uh, it was hard to want to do, so, do this, because especially like, it seems like anytime I said anything that was against any particular narrative, they literally, uh, uh, they literally, you know, just would delete it. <laughs> I mean, I had channels deleted for stating stuff that now is, you know, commonplace fact that's being said on CNN and by the CDC director. <laughs> So, uh, kind of interesting how that works out. Let's see, if you buy the three months, do you have to start immediately? It can be scheduled out for a few weeks. You, uh, it, you, if you purchase it today, we can schedule it to start in a few weeks. That's not an issue. And I do believe since uh, the deals are run through PayPal, you can, you can even get a three-month block with, in four payments through PayPal, but that's not on us. So, you can check it out. And like I said, I'm going to post that one more time. But absolutely, Kitchen Witch, if you get it today, you can start in a few weeks. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine by us. Um, that's not an issue whatsoever. Um, so before we get going, we are not going to get to the graphic content uh, about amputations or anything like that right off the bat, okay? But we are going to look up the, the pictures of these things. That I think a huge portion of the problem that we have in society is that we are decoupling the negative aspects of what happens with uh, morbid obesity and abusing your bodies via food. We are decoupling the actual actions with the consequences like it's you know a morbidly obese person gorges on uh, you know an extra large pizza and drinks a double you know a two liter of coke they're just thinking good love the flavor you know blah 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 and they might feel a little over full but we don't actually couple with what actually happens with that systemically down the road you know a morbidly obese person especially a person that's, had, that's diabetic or pre-diabetic you know, that has blood sugar issues, drinking a bunch of sugar is, is self-harm. No, nothing, uh, nothing makes me fucking, I, 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 will, I will argue that forever. If you, have, if you have diabetes and you are ingesting tons and tons and tons of, uh, of uh, sugar, that, that is self-harm, you know. Let's see, speaking of, which for a long, uh, speaking of watching for a long time, I remember your physique was so different several years ago. Uh, it was, uh, you've cut down a lot, and it's been great to hear about talk about being happier and healthier now. Thank you very much. Eli, how are you doing? Pleasure, uh, glad you're here, man. Uh, thank you. Um, I actually still, that's another reason why I took, it, uh, took about a month or two off from actually lifting and stuff like that and just did uh, mobility work uh, is I really, uh, I really want to, still want to downsize even a little bit more. I, I want to end up weighing about 180 pounds. Uh, that, that would be good. 180 pounds, decently lean. 180 pounds around, at around 12 or 13% body fat would be, would be fabulous. You know, um, but I was cranking up like uh, the, the lean mass I had on when I, I would get down, like the, the last time this past summer, I got down to probably somewhere around eight or nine percent body fat. And, uh, and I was still like 185, 100, close to 190 pounds, depending on the day. Uh, and that was flat. That was like carb depleted. So I want to get down to about 180 pounds lean uh, and I'll be very happy. Lean and, and, and uh, comfy. Uh, lean and comfy, and I'll be good. I'll be, I'll be very, very happy. And I'm not as lean as I was last time. I'm talking probably like, I, I, if I float around 10, 11%, I'm going to be excellent, doing excellent. Jason Priestley, how are you doing? Tiffany, great to see you. Uh, if you guys don't watch Tiffany Gray's channel, you absolutely should. Tiffany and, uh, and Lindsay, I don't know if Lindsay's going to be able to show up. We're going to go live again sometime very, very, very soon. Very, very, very soon. So, um, and let's see. Do, 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 do. We are not going to do this. Sophia, you can come back later, but you're going to be in timeout for a little while, okay? So um, be a good little troll and just accept it. Now, uh, we are going to start with... Oops, sorry about that, Stephanie. Let me get you out there. This is... The National Library of Medicine. The Epidemic of Obesity and Diabetes. This is from 2011. Okay, so yes, more data has been done. We will go over the data also. 
But I just wanted to run through this. Cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death in women. Both obesity and diabetes mellitus are important and independent risk factors for the development of cardiovascular disease. Obesity is the leading risk factor for type 2 diabetes. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention reports that 32% of white and 53% of black women are obese. This is from 2011 statistics, by the way. That's how crazy that is. I would argue that those things are much higher than that right now. Uh, women with body mass indexes of 30 kilograms per meter squared have 28 times greater risk of developing diabetes than do women for non normal weight. Now, here's the thing. When people say, uh, you know, it's causation, it's correlation, not causation, blah, 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 I, I totally get that, but I'm always going to argue with folks, and please pay attention to this, because I really, like, for those of you that came here to see some sort of serious rant, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, okay? But this is just important. It's time to wake up. It's time for people to get healthy. There's, I mean, the last two years, should, should, there's, there should have been nothing more than a focus on getting healthy. We can no longer deny that if you are a morbidly obese person, if your body mass index is 30 or above, especially if you're a woman, and this is science, you have a 28 times greater risk of developing diabetes than women of a normal weight. The risk of diabetes is 93%, 93 times higher if your BMI is 35 kilograms per meter squared. 93 times greater. The presence of diabetes can increase a woman's risk of heart disease twofold. In addition, the presence of diabetes overshadows the protective effects of the pre-menopausal uh, pre state. In 2007, 11.5 million of all women over the ages of 20, 10.2%, had diabetes, and rates were slightly higher in ethnic minority groups, 10.4% in Hispanic women, 11.8% in non-Hispanic black women. Uh, the national prevalence rates of diabetes have increased in parallel. And I'm going to preface this one more time. This is a 2011 study, and this is just one of the random ones I studied, one of the random ones I grabbed. Uh, screening, and this is for educational purposes. This is so you, you folks understand. Screening for obesity and diabetes is the first step of treatment and often, reve uh, often reveals individuals who are at risk but do not have the overt disease yet. This is called pre-diabetes. The United States Pre uh, Preventative Services Task Force recommends that all adults be screened, for, be screened for obesity. Obesity signifies excessive adipose tissue. The most widely used method for screening is determined by the BMI. The BMI is weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. BMI equals kilograms divided by meters squared, table one. Most electronic uh, medical records uh, automatically calculate BMI if height and weight are, are entered. There are also smartphone applications, blah, 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 blah. Now, I will say this. Other screening tools include, and this is one that's very important, other screening tools include waist circumference and the waist-to-hip ratio. In women, a waist circumference greater than 35 inches or a waist-to-hip ratio greater than 0.7 indicates excessive visceral fat and increased risk for disease. So, and I also use height-to-weight ratio, too, or uh, waist-to-height ratio, too. To me, that, that if you are above, I believe it's 0.5 for women, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is a danger zone. So recommendations for screening for type diabetes vary by guideline author. The, the recommendations, screening asymptomatic patients who have blood pressures of 135 over 80. Uh, the American Diabetes Association, ADA, recommends that individuals who are 18 years of age or older and have a BMI of 25 kilograms per meter squared and one additional risk factor for diabetes should be screened annually. So even if you are of, uh, you know, in the oh, just overweight range, but you also have so another risk factor such as um, uh, family history of diabetes and those sorts of things, you should be screened annually. Individuals over the age of 45 without risk factors should be screened every three years. In January 2010, the ADA released new recommendations for the use of hemoglobin A1, uh, A1C as a screening tool. A1C greater than 6.5% indicates diabetes. In addition, the results of screening tests for diabetes can, can identify individuals with prediabetes who have markedly increased risk of, uh, risk of this disease. Now, we're going to blow this up here if we can. So... Uh, I don't know if I can get that blown up the way I want to. There we go. Whoops. We're going to stop sharing that. We're going to go to a different way to share it. So bear with me, guys. I'll take questions in between all of these, just so you know. Boom. Okay, so we're just going to blow this up a little bit. So I'm not sure if you guys, how well you guys can see this, but... Risk factors for physical inactivity, family history, high risk ethnicity, uh, uh, gestational diabetes, hypertension, vascular disease, dyslemia, previous impaired glucose tolerance and fasting glucose, and the polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay, so which many, like something like 15% of all women have, 15 to 20% of all women have polycystic ovarian syndrome. When should you get it annually and how? By fasting uh, plasma glucose levels. 
Less than 100 uh, milligrams per deciliter means you're good. 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter, and you have pre-diabetes. 126 and above, you are diabetic. So if you fall into the pre-diabetes range, and you can have these tested. You can test your own. They have testing kits that you can test on your own. You can also do a glucose tolerance test, and that's uh, uh, 140, less than 140 milligrams per deciliter, between 140 and 199, or uh, over 200. And the hemoglobin A1C is under 5.7%. Pre-diabetes is 5.7 to 6.4%, and then anything over 6.5, you are diabetic. Now, non-pharmaceutical treatments for diabetes, and the reason why we're going over these first is so people can understand what risk you are actually at. We really need to understand what the risk you're actually at and what to do about them. This is not just me spouting off because I want people to lose weight. I mean, and here's the thing. If you, I, I, I think if you're an obese person, not just for diabetes, we're going to go over many, 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 many things as much as I can in this short time frame. And I'm going to do these weekly. I'm going to have other lives where I'm going to talk about other stuff. But weekly, I'm going to talk about a very serious topic and I want to break down the information. So if you don't like these ones, I am going to be posting a live schedule of what it's going to be. And it will probably be the fat rate. This one will, will probably be labeled fat realities. Uh, fat realities will probably be every Monday at some point in time, probably during the day, not a Monday evening, because Monday is a long ass day for me uh, and my wife. I start my day about four o'clock in the morning on Mondays. And then especially when I'm going to start, you know, I, I start with these two a day workouts I'm going to be doing here soon. By 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, I'm going to be fucking exhausted. So I'm not going to be doing these every, uh, every week. They'll probably be sometime during the day and then you can rewatch them. But we will be doing the uh, fat realities probably every Monday, and then I'll probably pick a different topic to talk about. Like t we'll be doing a, uh, a TikTok hashtag one and stuff like that, different lives every single week. And I do implore you <laughs> greatly. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it down in here. Uh, give me one second. I do implore you to a great degree. Follow my Rumble channel. Because I have a strong feeling that YouTube is not going to keep me up, is not going to keep this stuff up going. It's just not going to do it. I just I really believe that. I don't believe for a second that they're just going to let me keep talking uh, and not not bring in reality. That's for sure. So uh, back to what we were doing. We are talking about the non-pharmaceutical treatments of type two, of type two diabetes. Lifestyle treatment options for diabetes mellitus and, ex and excessive weight are similar. In two recent studies have demonstrated the critical component for treatment of prediabetes and diabetes through weight loss using caloric restriction and physical activity. The first study was the Diabetes Prevention Program. The purpose of the study was to identify individuals who were at risk for developing diabetes because of elevated fasting plasma glucose and impaired glucose tolerance levels that were not yet in the diagnostic range, that means they're prediabetes, in order to determine if metformin or an uh, intensive lifestyle intervention could delay the, or prevent the onset of diabetes, more than 3,000 individuals with prediabetes were randoms, randomized to receive placebo, metformin, or a 16-session lifestyle modification program. The, inten the intensive lifestyle program set a goal of 7% weight loss uh, and 100, 7 weight loss and 150-minute walk per uh, minute a week per of moderate physical activity. 50% of the lifestyle intervention group lost 7% of their body weight. The three-year in in incidence of diabetes in, in the metformin group was 31% lower than the placebo group. The incidence was 58% lower in the lifestyle group than the placebo group. So basically, if you do it lifestyle-wise instead of just medication-wise, you are better off. However, metformin, there is like natural alternatives to metformin that we can talk about at later dates too. Mark and I are actually working uh, not the appetite suppressant product, but the one that we're working on for the second, uh, second, uh, the second product of, our, of the line will be focused on blood, blood sugar levels and uh, insulin sensitivity uh, with very, very, very good, uh, very good results. Very good results. The clinical implications of this study are, but you should do lifestyle first. The clinical implications of this study are that we should, one, identify individuals with prediabetes, and two, recommend lifestyle modifications that result in at least 7% weight loss and include 150 minutes per week of moderate physical activity. The second study that examined lifestyle treatment of diabetes and obesity is the Look Ahead trial. The purpose of this study was to determine the effects of intentional weight loss on cardiovascular risk factors in, uh, in individuals with diabetes. Approximately 5,100 individuals with type 2 diabetes and an elevated BMI were randomized. Study conditions specified a 36-session intensive lifestyle intervention with the option of using uh, partial meal replacements or caloric restriction, or four sessions of, sub of standard diabetes support of education. At one year, 55% of the intervention lifestyle group achieved 7% weight loss, hemoglobin, A1C, systolic and diastolic pressure, and lipids improved significantly more than an intensified 
a study group that had the, the ASC group. The clinical implications of the study is that intentional weight loss at least 7% can improve cardiovascular risk profile in patients with type 2 diabetes. Now, it depends on your weight. If you are uh, at, 40, at a 40, 40 BMI, I would highly suggest that 7% of your body mass, so 40 BMI is normally somewhere around 350 pounds, 7% uh, of that is somewhere around you know, less than 35 pounds, uh, like 28 pounds. You need to do better. Uh, you, need, you, need, you absolutely need to do better than that. If you're a 350-pound person, like a lot of these new drugs that are coming out too, uh, such as Wegovy and a few other things, uh, which Wegovy is a scary drug. I'm just letting, you, letting everybody know, and I mean, this is probably going to get people pissed off at me. Wegovy is a scary, scary, scary drug to me because it is just an increased dosage of a drug that already has a black box label on it by the FDA, and for the FDA to say something is dangerous, it must be pretty fucking dangerous. Uh, and it's just a higher dose of it. So... Um, let's see here. We are going to now go to, we're going to stop sharing that one, and then we are going to share this one. And this is directly from the CDC. Uh, pre-diabetes is a serious condition where blood sugar levels are higher than normal and not, enough, uh, not high enough yet. Okay, so pre-diabetes, signs, symptoms, simple blood sugar stress, for instance, type 2 diabetes, I think we've already talked about this. We're going to more go towards, give me one second. Um, ah. Twenty five must know statistics about amputations due to diabetes. This is from two thousand seventeen. Diabetes is a common medical condition in the United States. At least 9% of Americans are living with diabetes. Diabe diabetes affects many areas of the body. If you have been diagnosed with diabetes, you may be aware that your feet and watch out for diabetic foot ulcer. Now, here's the fucking thing, okay? One of the main things that we tell people to, that have diabetes to do is to lose weight. And we tell them to lose weight via, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle change and stuff like that and uh, moving on more. So, uh, da -da -da. So, uh, we, need, we, you know, we tell people that are morbidly obese to lose weight. One of the first things that we have them do is they go to somewhere along the lines and they grab some sort of somebody's stupid-ass fucking plan that has them jumping around, moving around, or running all the goddamn time. That's why when I see these morbidly obese, uh, when I see morbidly obese influencers, like um, Glitter and Lasers, I see her jumping and moving around all the time. Fucking tragic. R ridiculously stupid. Just, I mean, and th this is not to be, uh, this is not to dog anybody. Uh, this, th I mean, I'm just, gonna, I'm going to be very honest about a lot of shit with this stuff because we've got to stop playing around. The jumping around shit she does and all like that, that's fucking ridiculously, moronically dumb and stupid. And for lots of reasons, a morbidly obese person, uh, you know, that is especially a morbidly obese woman, and this is not to be sexist, and I'll explain why in a second, but a morbidly obese person doing bounding work and jumping around, everything like that, is very stupid. I mean, just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dumb. It's just, it, it is begging for an ambulatory injury that can cause the person to be laid up for months and months at a time. When they're already in a morbidly obese state, there's normally some depression that goes along with that. When they get injured, there'll probably be more depression, and they'll probably eat their feelings, and they will eat themselves into a worse state. So steady as they go... If you can get into a pool, do so. Swimming is the ideal one. But we also then look at not only just the ambulatory injuries, but we look at people that most, many people that are morbidly obese do have type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, or at the very least have circulatory issues and swelling and edema, and they're in a chronic inflammatory state. And then we have them run and jump and do all sorts of crazy shit on their feet. Most of these people cannot even check their feet. And we have them normally in shoes that do not fucking fit them correctly because shoes are made for the athletic lean person's foot. When a morbidly obese person wears a shoe, they normally have to buy a few sizes larger and their foot actually expands, gets bigger as they work out, as they spend time on it because they have swelling and the swelling goes into their foot and it rises up. This is not shaming. This is literally, and I mean literally, fucking fact. So that's one of the, my big, big things about this. We always have people talk about how they want representation and fat acceptance and blah, 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 and clothing lines, but they never talk about actual good shoe wear or workout wear. It's the same thing when we have morbidly obese people wear, like I see it all the time, where these morbidly obese women on TikTok, 
they go to work out and they kind of just kind of fold their fupa into into their uh, into their pants. That's very dangerous, especially if you're going to be sweating a lot. I mean, it's really, 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 really dangerous. Um, you know, again, if they, we can get them into a pool, great. I will say this too: if a morbidly obese person can't get into a pool and already has some you know some issues, walk at a very slow, good pace, walk for distance, get into a sauna. Sauna, being in a sauna burns calories. So they could burn extra calories just by being in a sauna. Spend time in a sauna. Make sure you're hydrating to replace the fluid you lose. It's not, it's not that kind of weight loss. Being in a sauna actually burns more calories. Like Mark and I are going to be releasing some stuff for this too at some point in time because this can help people ambiently lose calories uh, just, you know, just by being in a uh, warmer temperatured sauna, sauna like climate okay but we need to understand that the training met, training modality that's done for morbidly obese people needs to be one of very serious care for many reasons to avoid ambulatory injury and to avoid uh, foot ulcers and things like that normally from ill-fitted shoes and a lot of pe a lot of people especially if they have diabetes they might have uh, diabetic neuropathy which means they don't have a whole lot of feeling in their feet or a feeling in their, you know, in their extremities, and that can cause them to you know, not know when they have a problem or they have an ulcer. Um, if you're wondering, uh, wondering about diabetic foot amputation statistics, be warned, these statistics may seem discouraging, but keep in mind that information can be empowering and these statistics emphasize uh, the importance of seeking foot care, uh, medical care for foot ulcers as soon as you notice them. This list, uh, this list also highlights the close connection between peripheral artery disease, which is what I was just talking about, uh, which involves the blockage of blood vessels in the legs and what, what the likelihood of the diabetic foot ulcer to heal. It lowered, like, obese people don't heal at the same rate. Their immune system is compromised. It is compromised. It is, it just is. You should just fucking be understanding about that. Let's not, like, the problem is, a huge problem we have in our society is that we are pretending like people that are morbidly obese are not somehow ill. I mean, we're, we're pretending that they're not somehow like in ill condition. It's ridiculous. It, it is incredibly, and I mean incredibly, incredibly insulting to the person, one. And two, it's incredibly uh, dangerous. Like, I mean, it, it makes them think that they're safe and they're not. So here are some statistics, okay? One, a foot ulcer is the initial event for more than 85% of major amputations that are performed on people with diabetes. Two, in the United States, every year about 73,000 amputations of lower limbs are, are not related to trauma are performed on people with diabetes. It's 73,000 foot amputations or ampu lower limb amputations. 73,000 a year. These are 2017 statistics. This does not even include the great fattening of 2020 where the majority of people gained about 30 fucking pounds. Many, I mean, the, 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 chron the, the reason why I'm doing these things is the wave of chronic illness that is coming from how we have treated our bodies in the last two years, how America has treated themselves in the last two years. That number could easily reach 100,000 amputations, lower limb amputations, every single year in America. Easily, 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 easily. Of non-traumatic non amputations in the United States, 60% are performed on people with diabetes. Throughout the world, it is estimated that every 30 seconds, one leg is amputated due to diabetes. 10% of people with diabetes have a foot ulcer. The lifetime risk of developing a foot ulcer for someone with diabetes is 25%. Every year, about one to four people with uh, diabetes develop a new foot ulcer. Between 10 to 15% of diabetic foot ulcers do not heal. They eventually need, need uh, some sort of uh, what's called retraction, or, they need, or it results in amputation. Of diabetic foot ulcers that do not heal, 25% will require amputation. In one study, research shows that the following amputation, up to 50% of people with diabetes will die within two years. So after somebody receives a diabetic amputation, even of a toe, 50% of those people die within the next two years. And part of that reason is being they're already diabetic, they already eat like shit most of the time, and I cannot tell you how many times I've seen this happen, where the person is literally eating candy bars in the hospital bed after they have their fucking foot amputated. It is fucking tragic. Somebody said this is very graphic. These aren't the pictures that I'm warning you about being graphic. That's coming. Just so you know. That the, 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 this, is the, this is still the nice portion of this conversation. Okay? So I just wanted to get through the information so we can have a bunch of people. And if you don't want to see the shit that most people should actually fucking see... Then you'll then we'll be able to you'll be able to go on from there. 
Give me a second. The United States, the cost of care of diabetic foot ulcers, just of diabetic foot ulcers, is $11 billion a year. And again, this is for the great fattening of 2020. Approximately 20% of all hospital admissions in people with diabetes are due to foot ulcers. After a lower limb amputation, someone with diabetes remains in a hospital on an average of 9 to 12 days. Diabetic neuropathy alone causes between 45 to 60% of diabetic foot ulcers. Uh, P, uh, pad and neuropathy are involved in approximately 45% of diabetic foot ulcers. Men with diabetes over the age of 60 are more likely to have developed foot ulcers. That's because they don't take care of their feet either. Waiting to be, uh, be seen by a doctor for a diabetic foot ulcer for longer than six weeks can increase the likelihood that an ulcer will, remain, will result in amputation. The risk of amputation uh, may be decreased by up to 74% if a, if a team specializing in the care of diabetic foot ulcers is involved. That means that they do some blurring. And I think that's on you, because I, I, I look like I'm coming through pretty, pretty clear. Uh, let me see here. Honestly, it looks good to me. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Uh, an infection is the leading cause of it. Once an ulcer presents with more than 30 days, more likely to become infected. Uh, osteomyelitis, which is an infection in the bone, is seen in 50% of people with diabetic foot ulcers. That's where it actually gets into the bone. It's normally when they have to take your whole leg. Let's be real. Uh, one year after PAD treatment, up to 70 to 90% of limbs affected by PAD uh, in diabetic foot ulcers will be saved from amputation. Uh, among people with diabetic foot ulcers and PADs, improving blood flow within eight weeks. So they're talking about their treatment. So that's, that's all the good shit. Okay? I mean, that's literally all the good shit. Now let me pull up something here real quick. Okay, next. We are now going to obesity and skin, uh, obesity and skin fold soft tissue infections, how optimize antimicrobial usage and for prevention of treatment. Skin and soft tissue infections are prevalent in the obese population with rising trend expected. Although numerous antibiotics in, uh, are available for the prevention of the treatment of these things, their character, characterization is, in obese people is not, regular, regularly, is not regulatory mandate. Consequently, information that carries importance for optimizing the dose regime in, in the obese population may not be readily available. The review focuses on the pharma, uh, pharma, pharmacogenic and uh, pharma, pharma, pharmacodynamic data. So what we're looking for, this is not actually what it's soft tissue infections, critical review, that's treatment, give me a second. Viewers on, so give me one second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Give me one more second here. All right, so we are about to go to right here. I hope you guys are ready. These are, we're going to start looking at skin infections. Okay. Here's, here's, a good, here's a good graph. So this is the medical complications of obesity, pulmonary disease, uh, hypertension, stroke, cataracts, coronary artery disease, diabetes, this, uh, dyslipidema, I can never pronounce that, hypertension, severe pancreatitis, cancer, that's breast, uterine, cervix, colon, esophageal, pancreatis, uh, and prostate cancer at a higher rate than other people, including smokers, um, gout, skin problems, osteoarthritis, uh, gynecological abnormalities, which means uh, abnorm uh, abnormal uh, periods and fertility, and obesity does lead to, can can increase probably uh, PCOS. That's one of the reasons why PCOS that peop when pe women have it, it's important that you do try to control your weight, even though it's much much harder. Um, it could be YouTube. YouTube could be uh, YouTube could be fucking fucking with this. Just so you know. Uh, but. Sensitive content, please log in to view this image. It won't even let me. That's how bad, it, that's how bad some of this shit gets. Uh, I can't even do some of these things. Uh, 
Now, I understand, uh, by the way, I understand that lipedema is something that like, people can't get rid of necessarily in certain ways, but the idea is not to allow yourself to get it, you know? But, this is what, looks, what it looks like happens. Your skin comes off. It, it actually literally comes off. People need to start waking up. This is a real thing. Like people need to understand. This 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 is not a joke. This is reality. This is what a lot of people are going to go through if they don't literally try to fucking get their shit in order. Their skin like literally dies from from uh, not getting enough oxygen. These people, this I mean, this is the reality. People need to understand what the fuck is going on with life. I'm not even going to show some of these. I can't. These are what what it looks like to take care of your foot ulcers. People need to wake up. I'm going to give everybody a little break from that. I'll answer a few questions. But I just, I'm, whoop, now I'm out of focus because I just leaned in forward. So people wonder, wonder, wonder what's up with this. You know, people, uh, you know, people wonder why, you know, I get very serious about this. I know people. I coach people. Like, we have, we have people that we coach that are amputees. You know, this is a very serious thing. So people, it, you know, I, I've said this before. If I need to play the villain, if, if, if that's how I need to be painted, Alan, I weigh 374 pounds now and gained 50 pounds over the last year. Help me. We have coaching spots available. And right now, I mean, for real, right now, it's like 60% discounted rate for just, for, just for this call. For what we're, and, it's gonna be, and the prices are going to go up even higher. So, Peter Matz, There you go. Those are the coaching links. I'll help you. I'll help anybody. Again, I'll help anybody. I don't care. I mean, Tess Holiday could call me tomorrow, and I and I would help her. And that would be the last time I'd ever mention her name publicly. You know, I would definitely not. I would. I would, I would definitely not talk uh, about anything that happens because I don't. Once once I have a client type conversation with somebody where I try to where they ask me for their help and I try to help them. I don't, talk, I don't mention them anymore. If I offer advice to somebody and they don't want to take it, that's up to them. But if they come to me and ask me for advice, it's over. I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't discuss it anymore. I won't discuss that person ever again because that's what a good coach does. But, uh, if, I mean, if you've gained 50 pounds over the last year and you weigh 374, you need help. If you don't get help from me, if I'm not your cup of tea, I do highly, highly, highly suggest you get some help really quickly because... That is a death spiral. And I mean, it just, I, I, I don't understand, I, I can't put it in any other way. That's a death spiral right there. I mean, you, you, you are, I mean, you gained, in a year, you gained close to 20%. You gained like 18% body of your body mass. You're in trouble. Huge, humongous trouble. Humongous trouble. That is eaten, if you have any type of, uh, and I mean any type of, uh, activity going on. That's 4,000 calories consistently a day, every single day. Everything you're saying is absolutely correct. Uh, just passed my, no, my two-year post amputation mark. Still alive, but in much better condition. Good for you, dude. Good for you. Good for you. Way to take control of it. I, I'm sorry you had to go through that, but for, but for some people, that, that's, what, that's what reality is. Good for you. Good for, good for you, man. For real. I had some of these skin infections when I was obese. It's gone now. Very good. Like, people don't even understand. Like, I, I'm not even going to get... You know, I, I was going to do it, but I'm just... I don't... I, I'm not going to. But look up necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis is literally when you, uh, you get a skin infection where the bacteria eat your skin. Not only is it horrible to look at, the smell is unreal. I mean, un, unreal. And this is no shit. 
I mean, just, just to be real, the, the treatment for it is unbelievably painful. They have to scrape away the dead tissue almost daily. It's, I mean, it's, when it, it, it is, it, these are the things that are, this, like, this is why obesity is not glamorous, people. This is why making it seem like it's all fun and games, that's bullshit. You know, if, if, you are, if you are morbidly obese and you have no issues right now, good for you. You got fucking lucky. Fix that shit. No shit, you know? Uh, it's funny how it's displayed in the images but not on the website. I thought the same thing about that, but... Uh, and then they were complaining that the healthcare industry discriminates against them. You know, yeah, the, smell of infection, the smell of infection is horrible. It really is. It's fucking... It's, it, 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 you, know, you can't even imagine anything like it. You really can't. But... Uh, that's the thing, too. The medical industry does not discriminate against obese people at all. I mean, people, obese people need to get it that, like, you've made yourself bigger than, than, you know, than your body should be because you, you have made yourself ill. Like, you have to, you have to course correct. Like, you have to. It, it, it's just fucking... I can't even get... Like, some, sometimes when people come at me like that, well, oh, we're discriminated against and we're... We're a marginalized group. If you're a marginalized group because you're obese, you marginalized yourself. I mean, claiming that, first of all, it's just disgusting how obese people would claim to be, claim to be marginalized, like when there's actually marginalized people. You know, like that, you know, it's so. Uh, can you re reverse neuropathy? I believe that, uh, that, that weight loss and increased circulation will be good. I don't know, though. I'm not, I mean, for real. I, uh, once it gets to neuropathy where, that we're, there, that, you know, the the like you can increase circulation, but once the skin's dying, the skin's dying, dude. So I mean, it just is what it is. Imagine if John Hoff it's like it's gangrene, it's rot. You know. Imagine if John Hopkins maintained a website that uh, counted diabetic amputations in real life instead of the current issues being tracked. No shit, no shit. Uh, can you give us the all clear, Elizabeth? We're all clear. Diabetes affects the whole circular system. It's a horrible way to live. It truly is. It's, it's, it, it's an absolutely, uh, it slowly kills all your organs too. It does. It leaves the body in, in a you know, massively inflamed state too. Just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Fair play, Alan. You always try to, uh, to help people, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Peter Matz, if you need help, take it. There's nothing more valuable than your health. And I got to, I mean, here's, I got to be real. And this is no shit. I mean, this is another, this is another thing I got to tell people. You know, at the rate that we're charging for three months' worth of coaching right there, I mean, if you are a morbidly obese person right now, we'll save you more, than, more money than that in food. we just got to be real. You know, like, I mean, I, I have yet to have a client that hasn't told me that they've saved more money than the coaching was worth per month at the regular rates in food and shit like that. Because most of the time when people are morbidly obese, they're eating very poor. Their lifestyle habits are extremely poor. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You aren't baking pies at home. You're buying them out. You are not. You are not. You are not like making your own ice cream. You're picking it up. You are not cooking your own pizzas. You're ordering it. You know. If you go from that to eating whole some food and eating it yourself and cooking it yourself and shit like that, you save money. So I mean, it's something I have literally said. Do I need to? Do I need to seriously go on a diet, dude? I, you know. It, here's the thing, dude. If you are just trolling, you're a fucking horrible person. You know, I mean, like, I, it, like that's that's what amazes me. Like, that that's 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 ridiculous shit. So you're gonna make fun of like I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, it, it, you'll, we're actually having a serious conversation about shit, and you're fucking gonna act like, do I need to go on a diet, dude? If you are actually 374 pounds, you you sh you should have been on a diet fucking five years ago. So, anyway. Uh, people people claim that you can reverse low carb that you claim that you can reverse low carb can reverse all symptoms of diabetes. Uh, not all symptoms of diabetes. I would uh, once 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 skin tissue is dying, it's dying. If you have get nerve damage through neuropathy, I'd imagine the nerve damage doesn't come back. I do know that people uh, don't come off. I mean, we've had people on insulin and they're no longer on any medications. Uh, so that uh, insulin sensitivity can absolutely come back. Yeah. Um, let's see. I just don't know how people can deny the fact you can't be healthy at any size. I absolutely agree. Uh, okay, I'm just going to scroll down and grab, grab some questions here. 
Uh, my husband and I used to eat a ton of a uh, ton of easy ready foods. N now I don't understand how I, how I ate like that. You know, I, I understand how it's easy to fall into those traps almost, but especially in today's where like I have like t today we had uh, tonight we had barbacoa salads for dinner, right? Um, I had the barbacoa made up in the uh, in the Instapot. I did it yesterday it, or two days ago. Um, and I just threw the meat in with the seasonings and stuff like that, and fucking it cooked itself in three hours, and I put it in the refrigerator. Tonight, I literally made some rice, and while the rice was making, I heated, heated some of it up in the pan, put it on top. I mean, it, it was, took me, once I had the food prepped, dinner tonight took me 15 minutes. I, it, was, it got here faster, it was more tasty, and way, way, way fucking less expensive and a lot more healthy than if we would have ordered Chipotle, you know? Can't blame money either. Eating less and exercising more concerned. I mean, that's the thing too. It's people. Uh, that's another thing too. The well, pe sometimes people can't afford healthy food. <laughs> it's the dumbest argument ever because take the money you're spending on whatever food is keeping you morbidly obese. Eat and even if you eat less of what you're eating that's keeping you morbidly obese, you'll still save money. Uh, vitamin B1 can help. It can help, but once the, once it's dead, like once I I would took that as like once it's the nerves are dead, they're dead. So. Uh, do, 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 to some extent, that's what, yeah. Okay. Being told you are at risk and having a body part amputated would, would be scary. No shit. I ask because I've been through different platforms and begin to plus size isn't that unhealthy. Fucking plus size is unhealthy as fuck. Shut up. I mean, I, for real, like, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna entertain this shit, dude. Like, if you want help, I'll help you. But this is how I coach too. Like, I'm not gonna fucking bullshit around with you. Like, if you, if you came here thinking that, like, I can be 374, I, you, you said you need help, I'd help you. But don't fuck around. Okay? Uh, canned veggies never seemed that expensive to me. Shit, I mean, rice and beans is cheap as fuck. Period. You know? Move to making home bur uh, homemade burgers and pizzas. Uh, I can't control what goes in it. We, have, we make homemade burgers probably once a week. You know? It's just, I mean, it really is. Systemic lupus. Lupus is a different scenario. I mean, you, you should visit your doctor. I, I don't have any advice beyond what besides talk to your doctor for your lupus. Uh, how did the packaging meeting go for your supplement? Very well. Very, very well. Soon. Dr. Jason Fung on YouTube has hours of content about reversing diabetes. I don't watch his shit, just to be honest. Uh, I work for an ophthalmologist. And we, and, oh, that's another thing, too. Diabetes makes you blind. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it, it can easily cause your eyesight, you know? I mean, it, 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 there's so many things that can, that, that can go wrong from diabetes. We were just talking about amputations, but you, you can go blind, heart attack, stroke. Uh, I mean, you name it, you know? Glad you made for part of life. Welcome. I hope, you're doing I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing good. Let's see here. All right, guys, a couple slots taken. So we, if you're going to take, if you're going to take a slot, you you should do it now. Boom, boom, boom. All right. We, like I said, we got a couple slots taken, so if you're going to grab one, you should grab one now. Uh, depending on the veggies, uh, we're frozen. Uh, they usually were picked in the best ripeness. You know, I mean, frozen veggies work better than fucking uh, uh, work work better than than you know eating out and shit like that. That's for sure. Alan, I've seen necrotizing fasciitis. It's just it's fucking. Ooh. It is. It is. Horrible, 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 horrible. Uh, why do you dislike Jason Fung? I don't dislike him. I just don't really watch his shit. I mean, it, anybody that tries to market fucking fasting as a fucking as as a as anything much more than skipping breakfast and a meal thing, I'm not going to fucking do it. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you, they're, like the, when people call themselves a, a fasting expert, I'm like, dude, like, you're, there's no fucking experts in skipping breakfast. You know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Same thing. Like, you know. Uh, when people are like, "Oh, I'm a keto expert," you're you're an expert on you're an expert on on uh, uh, on, on, on on not eating that many carbs. What the fuck? Yeah, so uh, fair enough. Thanks. No problem. 
I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't watch his content, so I can't say I even dislike him. I'm just not going to, like anybody that fucking, I, the, the, what's his name, the fucking, there was one dude, like, I've made videos on him before, I can't remember his name, but he, I, I'm the foremost, foremost expert on intermittent fasting. Like, fuck, it's fucking skipping breakfast. Fasting works well for me. Fasting works well for everybody normally because they normally, you know, avoid caloric intake, you know? Yeah, take it for what it is, dude. Uh, absolutely. You know, I mean, ab absolutely. But, you know, when you market it as, you, like, you're an expert on fucking skipping breakfast, you take it for what it is, you know? I always love it when the fucking, when they get fucking ass hurt, when the fans get ass hurt in here. Uh, I lost 95, 95 pounds of chicken and broccoli mostly and a little cardio, but I'm, now I'm able to eat a more variety and I can run again. That is awesome. Just make sure you're always getting, uh, make sure you're always getting a decent amount of variety. Like the, I, one of the big things for people that have issues with food, um, which is what we, you know, we do with, we do with mostly habit, habitual stuff and lifestyle stuff, is that you have to really watch because, from the feeling of over-restriction. So that's excellent. So, uh, Let's see. Fasting is hard if you don't have a strong willpower. Then you're doing it wrong. I mean, I mean, or or it's not necessarily for you. I I fucking seriously like focus on hydration first, fill up, and then eat like eat when you start getting hungry. You don't need to fucking like that's another thing too. They teach these like, well, I'm gonna do 18-6 fasting, and that's better than 20 24 fasting. Like, fucking just push off a fucking meal for a little bit first. Like, I mean, like that's that's the thing that they they make it seem like it's this huge fucking regimen. People treat you different, different when you're obese. People treat you different when you're bald. People treat you different when you're old. People treat you different when you're young. People treat you different because of you. Welcome to fucking life. Buy a helmet. I have acid reflux. Eating a smaller meal portion works best for me. Uh, why every second world? I don't know what you're saying. Uh, well, I also heard there's evidence that when you're, you're, you fast, your body goes into a sort of repair mode uh, that you no longer have to have, that you no longer that you have to go longer than skipping breakfast. It's not an expert though. Here's the thing: in between meal times, like every time you ingest food, your body registers this as a foreign substance. There's a little inflammation that goes along with it. That's one of the reasons why fasting, especially keto fasting, works very, very well for people with ulcerative colitis and. Uh, uh, and things like uh, things like Crohn's disease and stuff like that, because they only have to put their digestive system through a little, for, through one portion or a smaller window a day of it being inflamed, and it's an inflammatory dis inflammatory disorder of the GI tract. So when you eat uh, low carbohydrate too, that's less inflammatory. The most inflammatory foods are ultra processed carbohydrates, sugars, flour, that sort of thing. And then you have regular carbohydrates that are a little bit more inflammatory, and then you get to you know, regular meats and stuff like that. So it does give the body a longer time to heal. I even knew a guy that had uh, ulcerative colitis that would fast for like three or four days and just drink water and, and vitamins and stuff like that uh, once a year just to give his time, his track chance to heal to avoid surgery, right? So it does do better. But if you cause yourself to binge because you're trying to fast too long, then that's not going to be healthy. That's why it's, it needs to be different for everybody. I like to work out in the morning and I feel uh, working out... Uh, I like to feel better in the morning, and I feel better working out anorexically, just meaning before uh, eating those triggers. I, got, I get what you're saying. I like, I like it midday. I really do. Much more cognitive with how quickly those uh, onesies, onesies, twosies, treats add up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Watching while getting meals ready for tomorrow. Good for you. Shrimp stir fry and with rice noodles and honey garlic sauce. That's fucking awesome. Uh, one, month of, one month of fasting or two days in a week is enough. A whole month of fasting, like like not eating anything for a month, that's crazy. That's stupid. Uh, or two days in a week, like, I mean, I, I, I tend to think people do better if they just kind of eat in a normal pattern. They develop a, their lifestyle pattern of what they fucking like to do. So, but that is, some, some people can work off that. If you think that's long, that works for longevity, uh, then go, you know. Uh, Got to disagree, brother. What do you mean? Uh, with what? I don't know what you're disagreeing with. Uh, people treat you different when you're uh, under 5'11 male too. Wow, wow. No shit. Fasting, it's not a lifestyle. For a lot of people it is. So, 
Um, I've been saving the majority of my carbs up for uh, or anything sweet for a final meal of the day. That's a smart thing to do to me. That's what I do too. Some people are good with it. Crystal eats uh, rice for breakfast. I, I normally save my carbohydrates up for my evening meal. So depends on the person. Uh, I find fasting is easier when it's not planned. I have eaten hardly any today, but it feels like I'm great. You know, that's the thing. Uh, uh, for something like some, if if you have to focus on, if all of a sudden you're becoming food focused because you're fasting, you're you're doing something wrong because you sh- it should be something that you barely think about. That's why I hydrate, you know, in the mornings, fill up, you know, fill up on fluid. I normally, my first meal of the day, I always talk about this, I normally fill up on fluid first thing in the morning. I try to get a huge portion of my fuel, fluid in early, earlier during the day. Like today before noon, I think I got in over like a gallon, like close to a gallon and a half of fluid between coffee and water. Um, and then uh, I had my first meal, which I did have like just, I had a leftover burger that I made uh, and then some, uh, some like basically red gravy, which to me that's... Uh, like a spaghetti sauce almost with uh, just meat. It's like a meat spaghetti sauce without noodles and shit like that. And then later on, we had bar- the barbacoa salads, you know, but I wasn't even really hungry when we had the barbacoa salads. I just needed to eat because I knew I was going to be with you motherfuckers. So, But I wasn't hungry at all even when I got my first meal. I just knew it was time to eat So, uh, because I needed, to, I needed to take care of it. Anyway, imagine being the healthiest member of the family. That's me. People really need to get there faster. I hear ya. Well, somebody asked me a question. Have you ever had uh, shirataki noodles? Is that the mushroom-based noodles? I, I believe so. So, people treat you differently when you go outside bottomless. Yeah, they do. So, at my heaviest, I was 214 pounds at 5'4", and I'm currently working towards 144 pounds. I'm now at 203, but I eat less, uh, and when I do, I eat, le- eat, eat right. That's good. My only suggestion to you is don't get too caught up on the exact end weight, okay? Uh, because then, it, then it, you know, make sure you're developing healthy habits along the way. If you're he- developing healthy habits along the way, then it won't be uh, as big of an issue when you finally reach the, w- reach the end point. You know what I mean? So my strong suggestion is that you, know, you keep going. I would, only, I would weigh yourself for a female. I would weigh myself once every two weeks. I would try to land that between my ovulation cycle and my menstruation cycle if I was a woman. Um, at most... Uh, that's, that's at most. Weighing yourself daily, especially when you're a woman, is kind of crazy. You have a lot of extra, a lot more adipose tissue, uh, subcutaneous adipose tissue that can be filled with hydration or be dehydrated. So uh, focus on the healthy habits. Don't focus on the end goal. The end goal will take you there. And then be, be very mindful of where you're at. Now, weighing yourself again, like I said, for anybody, I mean, if you, are, if you know you're eating healthy, healthily, uh, that should take care of itself, especially if you're morbidly obese. Now, when you get down into the lower ranges, when you, like, when you get down to like the 160 range, you may have to be a little bit more cognizant of what you're taking in. But if you focus on just eating you know, proper portion sizes and healthy habits, that should get you there more than trying to track every little thing and, and overcomplicating it. Um, we try to make sure that people don't focus on an end goal. Uh, you know, if you're obese, you know you need to lose weight. So we just focus on getting the habits together that will get you losing weight and get you to a healthy habit. So... If you, uh, humans evolved from, from feast to famine. I agree. Uh, uh, people absolutely treat you differently when you're overweight. It's very sad. Yeah, it's very sad that you made yourself overweight and then can want to complain about how people treat you. I mean, welcome to reality. Uh, you, you control the food that goes in your mouth. You control the activity you, you put yourself through. There, and if you think people treat you differently because of that, then that's because you put yourself in that position. You know, what's very sad is that thinking that there's a problem with, like, if you're saying that somebody treats you because I think you said you're 374 pounds, like, you have a problem, you have a problem. You're 374 pounds. They should look at you that way. Uh, That's life. Get a helmet. Can you make a t-shirt? Yeah, that's a good one. Me me and Mark are thinking of t-shirts to make up too. Six years old male, five years ago, I hit 315 pounds uh, and walking 10K a day and now at 160 pounds. That's what a fucking hero looks like. No shit. Hero. Hero. Fucking hero right there. That's what we need in this fucking world. The person took accountability for themselves and fucking changed their actions. Therefore, they changed their lives. Out fucking standing job. Listening while lifting at home. Excellent. Yes, you can have an eating disorder, and I think uh, fasting will fix things. Y- yes, you can't have an eating disorder, and I think fasting will fix things. For a lot of people, it will. 
it, a lot of people will. I just don't put, like the long, long stretches of fasting, I think, fuck more people up than anything. So. Uh, I often exercise before breakfast. A lot of people do. Who the fuck doesn't eat for a month? There's people that do that shit. Honestly, switching to low carb and fasting has been helpful for me, and I do it clean. I will say that find, find what works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Water is absolutely your best friend. It really, really is. Uh, hydration is, 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 is super fucking key for lots of reasons, too. It helps with sleep. It helps with stress relief. It helps make better decisions. It helps keep you hydrated and, and, and satiated, too. So, uh, Let's see. I'm going to skip down a little bit. I agree it becomes more of a challenge when you start focusing and when you can, uh, can or can't eat. It really does. Like when, 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 when it get micro, gets micromanaged, like one of my things is, is I get food focused. Like, so if I do allow myself to get too hungry, that becomes the entirety of what I think about. Uh, and therefore, it's very, very difficult for me to look away. You know, so uh, agreed that for food addicts, uh, in my opinion, fasting is ideal. You know, the thing is about it, dude, like, I mean, I really think that it, it depends on their addiction. It really, really does. If they have a, if they have an issue with sugar, sometimes fasting is, works really, really, really well. Because once they can get past the initial push of, of not needing the sugar, it works very well for them. But if they have uh, a lot of times a binge eating disorder, binge eating disorder can be a different thing. Because it depends on the binge trigger. Like, like for me, you know, because I'm a binge eater. For me, what I try to do is I try to make sure that I don't ever get too hungry, too stressed, too tired, or too dehydrated all at the same time because I will fucking have the urge to binge. You know, just fucking eat everything, right? But for me also, though, because I, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not addicted to food. I just have binge eating disorder. People that, have, like, that are addicted to food, addicted to food, uh, normally have a problem with sugar, and it's probably better for them to actually pull away from it a little bit. The less they eat, the less chance they have for it as long as they can keep themselves satiated. Because if the second, the second person who has a problem with sugar, especially, like an addiction to sugar, the, the, the second they taste something sweet, it's sweet everything. That's why we, that's why we even have people that have sugar problems uh, keep fruit to a minimum. And we just have them get their vitamins and stuff like that through vegetables. Because fruit can be a sweet flavor. When somebody's quitting sugar, when we have somebody pull off sugar, normally when they take in like three, four 400 grams of sugar in a day, and we pull them off of it, Everything becomes, it becomes banana and pineapple, every fucking thing. Bana, you know, banana and pineapple, every fucking thing. So if we have them fill up, hydrate first thing in the morning, uh, nice, savory, non-carbohydrate meal first thing off the bat. And then if we have them have something that has carbohydrates or even tastes like a, a sweeter vegetable, like even a sweet potato in the evening, as long as it doesn't have added sugar, if they do start to have cravings, if they have it later on in the evening, then they're only fighting off that urge for like an hour before they go to bed. So, and that's, one, that's just one of the tools we do for people that have problems with sugar. Um, I, I do that for myself because that's honestly like how, how I prefer to eat. But it's worked well with people that have sugar addiction also too. But if they're just a straight up food addict, uh, trying to push themselves, especially trying to push themselves uh, past, uh, uh, past like you know, the 16 hour mark is not, not, not normally good because then they get just, that's all they fucking think about. So I agree. But I did just want to put the caveat in there about the sugar addiction and the binge eating. So uh, there was a show in Great Britain that scares uh, that would scare morbidly obese people into living healthy. Uh, that show should be uh, our morbidly obese rate global cautionary tale. It really should be. I also like the one Secret Eaters because I always get that from people like I only eat 1,600 calories. I can't understand why I lose weight. If we tracked you all day long, we'd realize you're eating more than that. So. Was Clarence Bass even an influence on you? He's a positive example of healthy aging, in my opinion. I really do not know. I'd, I'd have to look up who he is. That doesn't mean I don't know who he is. Or... Clarence Bass, bodybuilding. Uh, I know who he is, but no, he's not an influence on me. I'm, I, I was never big into bodybuilding, just to be real. Uh, I realize that I'm so much better at sports when I'm fasted, empty stomach, and my legs feel like I, I perform way better fasted. Way better fasted. Like, how often as a man should you weigh yourself? I, don't, I haven't weighed myself in fucking months. I really don't. 
I, in fact, I only weighed myself the, the last time for YouTube, <laughs> like because I fucking people were people were constantly asking me about my weight. I I probably weigh between like 185 and 190 right now, um, but I haven't weighed myself in a long fucking time. So I'll probably weigh myself again here. Uh, probably what is it? January. Probably the end of March. I weigh myself just for just for just for the quarterly weigh-in. Uh, and I weigh myself. I get let I let myself get weighed at the doctor's office, so they could they have that because it's a clinical fucking aspect. Uh, I hear echoes of you and vice versa. Listening to uh, Atomic Habits today, focused on healthy habits. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, I stress heat. Do you have any any tips to cope with stress? Hydrate, get good sleep, find good stress relief techniques other than food. Uh, always have four of them, four, like two active, two non-active, always one a piece of having you can do at outside the house. So if one's active, like you like to go for a walk, you can go for a walk anywhere, stress relief, listen to music, um, or work out. It can be used as stress relief. Oftentimes I, I will like try to clean or cook. I, I cook for stress relief. I love fucking prep cooking. Uh, but also have uh, two, at least two that aren't uh, for, uh, that aren't physical because what happens if you are sick or get, you know, get hurt? Uh, oftentimes I, I play like puzzle games. I actually love puzzle games uh, and I read too, but another one is I, like I, I do research and stuff like that. So find four or five, like focus on it, find four or five good possible stress relief techniques. Uh, but the best thing you can do also is be better, you know, make sure you're planned out well, get really good rest, 30 minutes a day of sleep prep, uh, make sure the room temperature is right, make sure you, you feel good, shower before you go to bed, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, tip for dealing with stress, don't watch the news either. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Have you tried not being st stressed? Just kidding. I got to, uh, go for a walk. That's a good one. Figure out what's stressing you and attack it. I like that. People treat you better when you're thin. People treat people bad. <laughs> uh, I, when, when you're, people treat people bad when you're thin. You're fat. Uh, you're morbidly obese. You can barely walk. You're in a wheelchair. You can walk. Uh, you are white, you're black, you're Native American, like people treat other people bad. Uh, I don't understand how that became so illegal and why people started giving so much of a fuck about it. You know, uh, I think we should be much more worried about people treating themselves bad, uh, you know, because that's a big fucking issue. But people, like if people treat you bad, don't pay attention to those fucking people. I mean, I mean, I, I've, I, for two fucking years, I've had people sending me death threats and shit like that for trying to save people's lives. So, please pardon me for not giving a fuck if somebody is treating you poorly because you're thin or poorly because you're fat. You know, uh, just ignore them. If you if, if you are good with you, then you are good with you. If you are fat and somebody calls you and somebody says, "Hey, you need to lose fucking weight because you're fat." Uh, and you get, you get offended by that, you should examine whether it's a truthful statement. If it is a truthful statement, you should examine why a truthful statement fucking hurt your fucking feelings. And if it's not a truthful statement and the person just said it to hurt your feelings, you should not listen to that fucking person no more. Problem fucking solved. You know? Jeez. Down 55 pounds of keto and fasting until noon. Jason Fung and a few others, including Alan, was a godsend. Down 215 to 160. Good for you. That's a fucking hero. Fucking hero right there. Uh, see, my goal, my goal is to end up at 9... Okay, well, you're not going to end up at 9 to 11% body fat. So, uh, if you're 370 some pounds. How often should women weigh themselves? I answered that one already. It was, was it the 230s in, in November, 204 today. Samantha, great fucking job. That's a fucking great fucking job. November to today, that's a good fucking job. No shit. Just make sure be consistent. That's over the holidays too. That's over the fucking holidays. Great fucking job. Great, great, great job. I think 24/7 uh, uh, hour access to food has skewed our perception and need, uh, needs versus wants as a society. Needs versus wants is a big fucking thing. People say, "I I need something sweet." No, you want something sweet. You don't need nothing sweet. You don't even need carbohydrates. Your body does not even need carbohydrates. Your body needs fat and your body needs protein. That's it. It doesn't even need carbohydrates. Anyone that tells you that it does need carbohydrates is lying to you. I'm not sure. If, uh, I'm not sure if this has been asked to death, but how much protein do we really need? I feel like uh, we're sold 
to eat way more protein via powders and stuff like that? No, I don't think so. I think a gram, like me, a gram, a gram per pound of body weight keeps me nice and satiated. It's not a matter of fact of performance or anything like that, or, but it does help with body composition. I think it keeps me very satiated, a gram, a gram per pound of body weight. Of course, it's different for every single person. What you've been sold is that you need carbohydrates because you do not fucking need them. What you've been sold is that you need that bread. What you've been sold is that you need that wrap. What you've been sold is that you somehow need that ice cream or that, uh, that cookie. What you've been sold is all that bullshit. You do not need that shit at all. You need protein. You need healthy fats. You do not need carbohydrates. So when people say, like, oh, people just talk about the protein because they're trying to sell protein powders, then eat meat, then eat eggs, then don't eat the fucking protein powders. But get enough protein and healthy fats to satiate you. Because most of the time, carbohydrates don't even satiate you. Most of the time, carbohydrates add to your hunger. They actually increase the ghrelin levels in your system. They cause insulin spikes, which cause you to have... Uh, which cause you to, cause you to have uh, more hunger, and they negate uh, they negate the effect of uh, leptin, which your body releases leptin from fat tissue to tell you you're done eating. So that's what that's what the, that's what the indus- that's what uh, the, the industries have sold to people. People that bark about the supplement industry being the fucking problem or the fitness industry being the problem don't realize like oh it's a sixty million sixty billion dollar supplement industry or or, or sixty billion dollar diet industry and health health industry blah blah blah. It's a $250 billion fucking soda industry. It is like a fucking $2 trillion fast food industry. So just like try to understand what the fuck's up. If you don't want to eat pro- do the protein powders and shit like that, eat more protein at home uh, uh, you know, and eat less carbohydrates, especially ultra-processed carbohydrates. So, and that wasn't meant to be sassy towards you. That was just me being fucking me. So. Peanut and Amazon uh, Reese's products equal kryptonite. Fucking, why did you even mention that shit? So... Uh, I have a sugar addiction and binge eating disorder, so I don't eat refined sugar, and I never have trigger foods available. Smart fucking move. Oh, Jessica, that's you. All right, what's up? I have, I've had people try to convince me that sugar from fruit is healthy. Uh, then they get mad when I say sugar is sugar, whether it's from straw, uh, strawberries or a candy bar. The thing is, um, when you look at sugar in nature, sugar in nature is either found in very small quantities with minimal fiber, such as berries and things like that, blueberries, raspberries, stuff like that, or it is found in larger portions, like oranges, with a lot of associated fiber to it, okay? Um, it is still, the thing is, for a lot of people, the taste of sweet is what triggers them. So while fruit is not unhealthy for you, shit, I'm going to eat an apple probably later on the night. That's probably going to be my evening snack with a little bit, with a little bit of peanut butter. Uh, but um, if I do have one, I'm still pretty fucking full now I think about it. So, uh, But I just want to make sure I'm getting, I want to make sure I'm getting enough stuff in. And I, I, like I said, if I don't have... I try, to, I try to balance it where I don't eat in a way to make, ever make myself feel restricted because if I feel restricted, I end up fucking getting food focused and then I end up binging. So, and I haven't binged in a long fucking time. So. But I agree with you. A lot of people, like we'll, we, had, we had somebody like leave, uh, a, a, a client of ours eat like two bags of fucking oranges a day because they, they wanted sugar so bad. Like what the fuck? That's still a binge, you know? Like it's still a binge. Uh, I've seen athletes who eat 100, 100 to 25 to 150 per day and look great. You mean of what? Grams of protein? I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, grams of protein. I, I probably eat uh, 150 to 175 grams of protein a day, every day. Do often sweet, uh, sweeteners also trigger cravings? For a lot of people, they do just a, just a taste of the flavor of sweet. They do, even though um, biologically, biologically it can be different because biologically there's different glycemic index uh, indexes of those things. There can be sweet things that, that are very low glycemic. I do believe stevia is low glycemic, but the taste of sweet stevia can oftentimes trigger people to want more sweet, more and more sweet. You know. Hi, Alan. I was 340 pounds of my heaviest and, and uh, have lost 145 pounds over the years. Right now, focus. I'll lose that uh, last 20 pounds before I go to Air Force boot camp. Fuck yeah, motherfucker. Mason, great fucking job, Mason. Great fucking job. Keep posting your W's. We're going to be on for about another 15 minutes. Keep posting your W's. Hey, Alan, I love your videos. Thanks for all the great content. Miss Boss, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm-mm. What is your ideal breakfast besides steak? I don't eat bre- I really, I don't. I really don't eat breakfast. If I would eat breakfast, it would probably be a couple eggs. Alan, you and Mark were examples for me, uh, taking things seriously. 265 smoker to 203, which sustained seven mile minute run for five miles. 
Scooby was a ton of help too. Thank you all. Great fucking job. Thank you very much. Thank you very fucking much. Who's Mark? Mark Loveliner from Tiger Fitness. Kind of off topic, but rotator cuff exercises as warm up routines before hitting the delts. I do uh, I, I, I do yoga before I work out, so I don't do actual rotator cup rotator cup, cup stuff. I do some uh, some rehab exercises for rotator cuff occasionally, but not often. So. Uh, quality of sleep is so underrated. It is huge. It's a huge factor for people. Uh, it's a huge factor for people for their satiation, for their stress levels, for for so many things, cognitive uh, cognitive issues, that sort of thing. Let's see. Because you hurt their precious feelings, Alan. <laughs> you shattered their false reality. My 600 pound life scares me, and try to try to eat better. It's a fucking scary ass show. Self-indulgence does not equal self-love. Self-discipline equals self-love. I would agree. 100%. Before I lost 110 pounds, congratulations, by the way, uh, I used to get horrible infection clot pores that were more like painful boils between my thighs where they rubbed and chafed. We, I mean, I've known people like, we, we know somebody that, that uh, they had to have their belly button removed because it, they, they, had a, they, had an overlap, they had overlap and the belly button kept getting infected, so they had to have their belly button removed. Um, fucking crazy. You are 19 stone, now you're 15 stone. That's fucking crazy awesome. Great fucking job. King Richard III of England, great fucking job. I'm 67 pounds down, and I like sweet potatoes. Fuck yeah. I mean, you can have it. Like, I, a really well-roasted sweet potato. Oh, so fucking good. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, uh, uh. All right, guys, one slot left. One slot left. Uh, let's see. Carbs and sugar just make you hungrier. I absolutely agree. But great fucking job, by the way, TNC. Great fucking job. Great fucking job. Your stomach can be in pain from having eaten a ton of pasta and you'll still want more. I agree. It's fucking, I've known many people. Sweet potatoes, potatoes, and veggies are really the only carbs I eat. Great fucking job. Great fucking job. Uh, is it normal the mic the mic sound is not clear? I I think everybody else thinks it's clear. So, uh, did the fitness addict or any other YouTubers ever get back to you in regards to discussing discussing their false information? No, they're not going to either. And I'm not I'm not going to fucking I'm not bothering with any of them anymore. Fuck them. I mean, here's the thing. I, I have no I have no I have no drive to make videos like that at all anymore. The fucking YouTuber doesn't like them anyway. They're going to fucking demonetize or fucking strike the channel. Um, and realistically, the world changed. It's time to fucking grow the fuck up. You know, if these guys want to keep making content, talking about their bicep curls and all, the bull all that bullshit and only focus on that shit, that's fucking fine. Uh, that, that is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, uh, they can keep going. But if, you have, if you're a fitness influencer and you have for the last two years avoided talking about the fucking thing regarding health and fitness, you either don't know enough to fucking talk about it or you're too fucking uh, much of a sellout to try to fucking stay popular and avoid fucking getting canceled. Like, you don't actually give a fuck about your audience, so why the fuck say you do, you know? I mean, it's been a fucking two years people need to fucking discuss the, sh the actual reality of shit, so. Supplement industry wouldn't be near as big if people weren't trying to compensate for being unhealthy from what, uh, from what they're eating. The thing is, and, and, me, and me and Mark have, have talked about this before, most people trying to lose weight, like morbidly obese people, you don't need supplements. Like, you don't need performance supplements. You may, like an appetite suppressant, something to help control your blood sugar level, a really good fucking uh, multivitamin to make sure that you don't have any micronutrient holes in your diet that might cause cravings. Like, a lot of people crave chocolate because they're low in magnesium, you know, like shit like that, you know? So, like, people really, really, really need to, you know, to watch their nutrition first. That's where most supplements should gear towards. An obese person who is on pre-workout scares the fuck out of me, actually. Like, a 350-pound person taking pre-workout scares the fuck out of me. Their heart's already fucking taxed enough, you know? Uh, what are my preferred pronouns? Immune. Immune and I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm so thankful that, uh, that, my, that my food is my trigger. No shit. No shit. Anyway, I'm going to scroll down here, guys. I got about another 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got that impression too. So, uh, duh, 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 we're just going to put Peter in timeout. So.
Can you post a Rumble link again? I can. I'm going to find out why that didn't take the fucking video this time, the video feed in this time too. But it. here is for everybody that wants to please follow on Rumble. I'm actually going to be making some original content on Rumble uh, that's based off of whatever the fuck I want to talk about, <laughs> and and realistic stuff, even more realistic stuff about about a weight loss and obesity that I can't necessarily share on YouTube because they will fucking. Uh, They'll probably fucking strike the fucking channel. Uh, but also, besides that, and I did just want to put this here one more time, guys, because we got about 10 minutes left, and I am... Okay, this is the best deal that we're going to run. It's 60% off our coaching for three months, so please take us up on that offer. And like I said, we have one more spot available. Let's see... I've always, I've always been active, but eating has been my biggest struggle, and it's finally caught up with me. Being an obese hockey goalie, 6'1", 260, caused me to tear my meniscus. Don't get fat seriously. That's tough, especially because you probably had to fucking, uh, you probably had to take time off, too. That makes it even worse. You had to quit, you had, whoops, you had to quit because your uh, BP got out of control? I'm glad you quit, though. If your blood pressure's out of control, I'm glad you quit, so... I'm 15 with 208. I can't talk to a 15-year-old. I'm not going to talk to a 15-year-old. What's your BP at? Anyway, guys, any last questions? I'm going to wrap it up so I can go chill with the wife and have an interesting night. We are. I'll be posting up. I'll, I'll be doing a live tomorrow at... Live tomorrow is probably going to be just uh, generalized Q&A topics. We might talk about some, uh, some fitness YouTube or fitness TikTok shit. But tomorrow's live is going to be at 1.30. So, and I'll be posting up everywhere. So, Bunny Girl, uh, what would you advise is the best way for us to raise people's awareness of obesity dangers without alienating them? Everyone is so sensitive these days. I, if, if they're not willing to listen, they're not willing to listen. I mean, t you know... Definitely will purchase someone when they come out. Good. The the thing is, like, we have tried our best. Like, the reason why they're so sensitive is because we have placated people and been politically correct for too fucking long. We have politically corrected ourselves into this fucking position. We have allowed people to be like, don't say I'm fat, that hurts my feelings when the person's 300 fucking pounds. We have, we have, you know, we have humored morbidly obese women on the, t on the front covers of Cosmopolitan magazine saying this is healthy and people being like, that's right. That's not right. That, that, is, uh, th that is not right. That is fucking, mor the person is morbidly obese. They are not healthy. Why fucking lie? Your link generates an error message. There's a 404. Yeah, give me a second. The link for which one? Work for me, no problem. Okay, good. We'll let the schedule a session. Why well, should it work? Give me a second. Uh, uh, uh. That one works. That one works. Oops. I see one. Here's a 30-minute coaching, 30-minute consult. Works now. Excellent. 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 All right. Um, let's see. Do more fitness out of human videos. No, you do, I tell you what, you do one and then I'll, I'll watch yours. You, you do one and I'll watch yours. I like that. Uh, have a great night. You too. Thanks for the show, Alan. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, chatting to great suggestions. Dustin, my pleasure. And like I said, 9.30 a.m., 9.30, oh, excuse me, 1.30 p.m. tomorrow, we will be going live again uh, and we'll be discussing other topics besides this. But then next week's topic, we'll probably be talking about uh, rubber meets road. God damn, motherfucker, that's right. Uh, but next week we'll be talking about uh, 
I'll, I'll pick another topic that we'll be talking about. I don't know which one yet. So anyway, anyway, guys, I hope everybody has a fabulous fucking day, uh, a great fucking evening, and if you need anything, let me know.